In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use the pattern along path path effect in Inkscape. And the example I'll be using for this demonstration is the stitching going along the seam of a baseball. Before we get started though, if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you need it. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to create is a single object to be used as the red stitching on the baseball. As you can see here, we're going to create one shape like that. So let me come down here out of the way. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to create an elongated rectangle like that. And I'm going to take this handle up here and round the corners like that. And then I'll take this top edge and round that all the way so that we end up with the shape like this. And then I'll finalize this by going to path and selecting object to path. And then I'm going to take this and rotate it around. I'm going to hold my control key and rotate it around like that so that it is horizontal. Now I'm going to open up the path effects menu by going to path and selecting path effects. And the path effect I'm going to choose is bend. So I'm going to look for bend. There it is. And I'm going to click on this um, edit on canvas button right here to get this green line that we can edit. And I'm going to take this node and just elongate this a little bit. And I'll take this green line and just bend this down. And you can use this handle over here to adjust the width of it if you'd like. So I'm going to make mine about that size. And then once that's done, you can go to path and select object to path to finalize that as it is. And now I'm going to make this a shade of red. And then I'll rotate it around a little bit. Now I'm going to right click this, go to duplicate. I'm going to press H on my keyboard to flip it horizontally and then hold control and click and drag it over here. And then I'll just select both of those and unify them together by going to Path, Union. And I'm going to grab my Nodes tool and get rid of these nodes up here. And then I'll just adjust these handles a little bit. So now I'm going to create the black, a black circle going underneath the stitching where the stitching goes into the baseball. So let me grab my Ellipse tool. And I'm going to click and drag to draw an ellipse. I'll make this black and I'm going to rotate this around a little bit and I'm going to lower this beneath that red object and place it right about there. I'm just going to adjust that a little more. And once that's set, we can duplicate that by pressing control D, flip it horizontally by pressing the letter H on your keyboard and then hold control and move this over here and I'll lower this beneath like that. Okay, so now we have the objects set that we want to use for the pattern along path effect. The problem with the pattern along path effect is that it only works on a single object. And what we have here is multiple objects. So the workaround we're going to use to get around this is I'm going to select all of these and go to path and select combine. And it's going to make them into a single shape like that for now, but that's okay. You can ignore that. We're going to correct that later on. So let me take this and move this out of the way and scale it down a little bit. Now I'm going to create the path that the stitches are going to go along. So it would be this rounded shape. It's sort of like a light bulb like shape. To create that, I'm going to grab my circle tool, hold control and click and drag to draw a circle and convert that to a path. I'm going to turn on snapping and I'm going to duplicate this and snap this at the bottom. And then I'll take those. I'm going to duplicate them again, control D or right click and select duplicate and snap these over here. And then I'll select all four of these, go into the shape builder tool, and I'm gonna draw a line going through this space right here. And now we have the shape that we wanna use. So let me take this and rotate this around. I'm gonna hold control while I do that to make sure it's perfectly vertical like that. And I'm gonna apply a stroke to this. So I'm gonna hold shift and click the color black. And then I'll click the red X down here to get rid of the fill color. And I'm gonna double click this stripe over here to open up the fill and stroke menu. And I want to set the stroke size at two pixels for now. Mine's already set, so I'm going to leave it as it is. And then I'll grab my nodes tool. I'm going to select these two nodes up here, and I'm going to click on this button up here that says break path at selected nodes. And then I'll break them apart by going to path and selecting break apart. Grab the selection tool, and then just take this object right here and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. 
So this is the path that we're going to apply the pattern to. So let me bring this over here. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. And I'm going to right click this and go to copy. And then I'll select this object. I'm actually going to duplicate this object. I'm going to press control D to make a duplicate because we're going to need another copy of this to be the, the seam in the baseball that we're creating. So we're going to have one copy of that path for the seam and another copy that the stitching is going to go along. And I'm going to open up the path effects menu. And the one I'm looking for is pattern along path. So I'm just going to type in P-A-T-T and there it is. Now I'm going to click on this button over here that says link to path and clipboard. That's going to take the copied object and paste it along that path. And where it says pattern copies, I'm going to choose repeated stretched. And then I'm going to take the object. Let me zoom in on this. You can see it took the object and wrapped it around the path, but it made it go in a different direction. So I'm going to rotate this around and this is all linked. So like as you edit this, the pattern will edit on the path as well. And I'm going to make this a little smaller. And I'm also going to put some spacing between those objects. So let me click on that object to select it. And if you come over here into the menu, you'll notice you see the spacing input. I'm going to increase that value until there's a, a good amount of spacing between those objects. And try seven. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to make this red. I'm going to get rid of the stroke color by holding shift and clicking the red X. And now I'm going to finalize this by going to path and selecting object to path. And then I will go to path and select break apart. And now we have a bunch of individual objects. So what we want to do now is select just the circles and make them black. But to do that, I'm just going to deselect the red shapes in the middle first. So I'm just going to hold shift and click on each of these shapes to deselect them one by one. And then once I'm finished, I should have only the circles selected. So let me go do that real quick. And now that I only have the circles selected, I'm going to click on the black swatch to turn them black. And then I'm going to unify them all together by going to path and selecting union. And now we want to select all of the red objects. But first, let me take my original shape and get rid of that. Instead of clicking on each of these red shapes, I'm just going to click on one of them and go to edit and choose select same and choose fill color. And then I will go to path union. And as you can see, just like that, we use the pattern along path, path effect in Inkscape to create this uh, stitching along the seams of a baseball. So to finish, to finish up the rest of the design, I'm just going to grab my ellipse tool and I'm going to click and drag to draw an ellipse. Let me turn off snapping. And I'm going to turn off the fill and I'm going to apply a black stroke. So I'll hold shift and click on the black swatch. And this should be two pixels by default. And I'm going to hold shift and click on this object and just make sure I have it centered. So let me open up my align menu by going to object and selecting align and distribute. I'm going to choose last selected and center it according to the vertical axis. And now I'm just going to scale this down as needed. Okay, that, that right there looks pretty good. What I'm going to do now is get rid of all of the stuff that goes outside of this circle. So first, I'm going to choose the red objects here, and then I'm going to grab the nodes tool. And I'm just going to select all of the nodes there and press delete to get rid of them. And I'll do the same thing over here on this side. All of the nodes that distend beyond that circle, I'm just going to get rid of those. Same thing with these black circles. Let me select these, delete those. And now I'll get rid of the, the black line. But to do that, I'm going to select the circle duplicate that by pressing control D and then hold shift and click on that path and go to path cut path and then I could just take these and get rid of them and if you want to see what I did here with the um, well first I have to apply this shading so let me do that real quick let me make a duplicate of this circle control D I'm gonna make this a dark shade of gray I'm going to hold shift and click the red X to get rid of the stroke. I'm going to send that to the bottom. And then I'm going to duplicate that with control D. I'm going to make this a medium shade of gray or a lighter shade. 
And I'm gonna scale this down until the bottom part of the circle goes through the seam right here. And then I'll take this top arrow and scale that up about that far. And then let me just lower that down until it, until it goes beneath everything. And then I'll duplicate that again, Control D. And now I'm gonna use white. And then I'll scale this one down a lot more. Okay, so now we've made our vector baseball. So the next step I can show you now is how to make like this wireframe sort of effect, so especially with the handles here. So that's another path effect we can use. So let me make a duplicate of this. I'm gonna press Control D and hold Control and move this one over here. And for this, I'm going to apply a stroke color. I'm gonna hold Shift and click on the black swatch and then click on the red X to get rid of it. And we want everything here to be the same size starting off. So let me come over here to the fill and stroke menu. Let me change this value to pixels. And I'm just gonna change that to one. And then I'm gonna take these two smaller circles. I'm gonna select both of them by shift clicking them. And I'll make these a little smaller so that they're not so prominent. And in here, this looks a little, um, it looks a little tight in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of those objects, the circles and the seams, and I'm just gonna combine them together by going to Path Union. And then I'm gonna select the outer circle, and I'll go back to the Path Effects menu, and I'm gonna look for the, it's called Show Handles Path Effect. And what that does is it places these handles around the edge of the path, everywhere that there's a node. And these aren't actual handles, these are just the designs of handles. You can use that as kind of like a usable vector design. And you could change the size of these handles over here in this menu if you'd like, if you'd like it to be a little smaller. But I liked how it looked before, so let me set that to 10. And you could change the color of this by selecting all of it, and then shift-clicking one of the colors in your swatches down here. And that should do it for this tutorial. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.